Hello friends, I'm Mike, the Hi-Fi fanatic behind Audio Architects. For those who are already subscribed, it's good to see you back for more. If you're a first timer and you're into speakers, amplifiers, CD players, subwoofers, headphones, just music, basically all things audio, you're in the right place. It would be best if you stuck around for a bit because I bought a 35 year old CD player and we will see how good music sounded in 1987. Okay, so I didn't just blindly buy a random vintage CD player for this project, even though I have been known to do so from time to time. A buddy of mine recommended I purchase the Magnavox CBD-473 because inside the unit there lives a highly revered DAC called the TDA-1541. This is in fact a rebranded Philips player, however I don't think that makes a lick of a difference. So I opened my eBay app, found one in acceptable condition, and hit the buy it now button. It sent me back a hundred smackers, but I needed to hear this for myself. It arrived within the week and I unboxed it. Sorry I didn't film that part, you'll just have to live without a ceremonious unboxing. The first thing that caught my nose was the smell of the unit. It smells like, like, like an old box of comics inside of a musty garage. In other words, it smells like vintage. I plugged it in straight away and powered it on. The first thing that caught my ears was how loud the tray mechanism is when opening and closing. Not a fan. This may be easily fixed by applying fresh lubricant to its mechanical moving parts. However, I am not judging this necessarily on its ability to open and close silently. I knew it would have quirks like these because of its age. However, I was way more concerned about the health of the laser and its overall operation. Let's take a quick look and see what's happening on the front and back of the unit, as well as explore this unit's features and specs. The front of the unit is quite unique. On the bottom it has an interesting lip that houses some of the buttons that control its functionality. The remainder of the buttons are on the right side of the unit and a power button is on the far left. Now this player did not come with its remote control, my bad. Uh, I kick myself now for that since I assumed there would be at the very least a few out there in existence within the used market. Nope. No original remotes. So if you guys have one you aren't using please email me because I really want one. Right in the center of the unit is an excellent fluorescent display. It provides the essential information needed like the song duration, track selection, and other small functions like memory and something called uh, favorite track selection, which I wasn't interested in back when CD players were booming, so obviously it's negligible now. Around the back it has RCA outputs which I am using because of the DAC inside the unit, kind of the whole point of getting the CD player to begin with. It's accompanied by a digital coaxial output so you can, you can theoretically use the player as a transport and take full advantage of your favorite external DAC. Lastly it has an RC5 in and out. RC5 is an infrared remote control system used on Magnavox and Philips components. Um, during this era mostly, it's a protocol where one remote could essentially control a system of Philips gear that supported this technology. I suppose this is the equivalent of an app on your phone that can basically manage your entire system just in an early 80s type of way. Either way, I don't have a remote or <laughs> any supporting products to test this cutting edge tech from many moons ago. So I got even more curious and wanted to see its insides. I was pretty surprised at how much space was available in this unit. Typically when I open up a CD player, most of the interior compartment is you know, spoken for by various components. I did blow it out to eliminate any excess dust and debris inside the player. However, I like how tight they packed everything. I suppose there really wasn't a lot to incorporate back then since this is just a straightforward red book CD player. And there's the money shot right there, the TDA 1541 DAC chip and board. Very cool. I will consult my local hi-fi store soundings to see if they can help me lubricate the mechanical parts. Since I am not too familiar with this unit and don't want to apply lubricant to the wrong parts and just ruin the party. So 
What is so special about this DAC? I keep talking about. Well, it's a 16-bit digital to analog chip with the ability of 4 to 8 times over sampling. It's said to be a high-performance DAC that can produce exceptional sound quality, low noise and distortion, and high dynamic range capabilities. We will put all of those claims to the test in the next segment. I want to lead with that this player can play CDRs even though it doesn't claim it. So I would say you are good to go with all of those old mixes you made back in high school. I played Tool's Chocolate Chip Trip mainly because I wanted to test the dynamic range and how this unit images. There is a pair of AudioQuest Evergreen RCA cables feeding the analog signal directly to the Cambridge Audio Evo 150. I found it to be an enjoyable and warm sound. It wasn't shrill and cold like some units. Depending Depending on the output stage, of course. However, this player sounded absolutely beautiful. The bass is strong, the mids were a bit toned down, and the highs were brighter than I expected. Overall, a very decent V curve in the sound signature, which plays very well to my preference in tonality. It sounded surprisingly dynamic and transparent. The musical presentation from this unit has a way of just drawing you in and wanting you to stay there listening to it. Now, you don't have to get this particular model and player to take advantage of the TDA 1541 DAC chip. I will be providing a link in the description below of all the players that feature this magical chip so that way you have tons of options. If you've been interested in dipping your toes in the used vintage market, I could tell you already it's going to be an adventure. A crazy one. It's good to know about the product though before purchasing it because you'll be able to learn a little bit about the history of what you are about to buy. I feel that this player has a sound that could be marketable today if it had a physical makeover. Honestly, if I could find a player today that had that DAC and sounded that good for a hundred smackers, my god, that would be the end all for everyone. Keep in mind, this player is almost as old as I am, and I am starting to fall apart a bit, so I could imagine. Imagine a mechanical and electronic device would be feeling the same way. I'm actually impressed with how well it works for its age. It's kept up well. I will keep you posted on the tray noise after consulting with my buddies at Soundings. I honestly feel some fresh lubricant will eliminate that weird noise. Let's hope for the best because everything else is working just fine from the looks of it, knock on wood. If you do end up purchasing this player or own one from the, you know, the list, or if, if you own this one, let me know in the comments below so we can chat a bit about it. I'm going to open up a forum on my website, www.audioarchitects.com. That way we have a more comfortable platform to talk about all things hi-fi rather than the possibility I miss a comment and lose the opportunity to chat about the things I love so much. I want to thank you all for joining me. If you're already subscribed to this channel, thank you. I do have an online shop you can check out where I sell audio related t-shirts. This is one of them, the CD shirt. I sell hoodies and merchandise and this all helps support the channel. So if you're new to the channel and like it so far, I encourage you to check out some of my other videos to see if my channel is the right fit for you. And I would love for you to end up subscribing and joining me on my journey in hi-fi. Thank you again for spending some time with me. Take care and I will see you next time.